What's going on? Rob Fish here in the Bike Bandit Garage. You know, riding off-road, it's super fun. Being out in nature and riding with your buddies and challenging yourself on different trails and terrain and simply enjoying time behind the handlebars. It's even more fun if all the riders follow the rules of the road, even when there is no road. But what are the rules? Can they be found in some sort of magical book or are they passed down from generation to generation? So in this video, there's no one product we're reviewing. Instead, well, remember, we at BikeBandit.com, we're in the fun business, and sometimes we all just need a little reminder of the basics. Join us as we look a little closer at the topic of off-road, trail manners, and etiquette. You know, it all comes down to common sense, safety, and respect. Maybe you've heard the joke, isn't it a shame that common sense isn't? By utilizing these tips, we can make the ride just that much safer for everyone, continue to foster positive relations with other trail users, and keep our riding areas open. For future use by showing the land management organizations that we can take care of ourselves, each other, and maintain our access to the land that we need so much for our fun. Again, so much of this comes down to just those three things, common sense, safety, and respect. Now when I say respect, I mean just good old general courtesy. Nothing fancy here. Respect for others on the trail and not just others on motorcycles or quads, but also those in 4x4 vehicles, but just as important, hikers, mountain bikers, and perhaps the most important, those on horseback. Let's break all that down a little further, shall we? Let's say you're riding with two other buddies and you're cresting a hill and you want to stop on top to take a picture. Approaching the hill standing up will let you see further ahead. When you do stop, pull to the far side of the hill so that oncoming traffic will see you too and the guy in the back doesn't have to stop on the uphill slope. That seems like common sense, but it's often forgotten when we're actually on the trail. Let's say you're cresting that same hill, but are continuing riding instead of stopping and you encounter another group coming the other way. An easy way to tell them how many riders are in your group is just hold up that many fingers of the riders behind you. The last rider would hold up a closed fist to show that he is the last rider. Imagine if everyone did that. Now here's where we can get some awesome points with other trail users. When you're approaching hikers, cruise by at a much slower speed. Most likely they'll hear you coming, but still, do your best to minimize noise and dust. It just ups the safety factor for all and leaves them with a good, friendly impression of us. And if you encounter a mountain biker, Remember, same rules apply. Now, so far, we've talked about others that can control all aspects of their adventure. When it comes to people on horseback, now you're dealing with another creature with its own sense of fear. If you come ripping around the trail and scare a horse, the rider is actually left in a very precarious situation and there's no telling what it'll do. Best thing to do is pull over and shut off your engine and from there, listen to the horseback rider as they will let you know exactly what to do. I guess that brings me to the next item to consider. Remember, you're out trail riding. You're not going for podiums, you're not going for points. Keep things fun, but keep things in control and expect the unexpected. Have fun, for sure, but don't go all out on public trails. Here in SoCal, we have a couple of state riding parks that are absolutely amazing. Not only do they have motocross tracks for big bikes and little bikes, and even one for ATVs, they have an obstacle course for four-wheelers and just under 20,000 acres of riding from sand, single track, double track, etc. But perhaps the coolest thing that they offer are one-way trails, and that way you don't have to worry about going head-on with another rider, let alone a buggy. What I'm trying to say is that sometimes we get so lost in our own rides that we forget that we're not the only ones out there. So be aware and be careful. Another aspect would be things that you might not personally encounter, but will certainly feel the lack of consideration. And I'm talking about the actual environment, so please, tread lightly. Go easy on the throttle and minimize skidding. And please, insert your decibel killer in your muffler. And obviously, run a spark arrestor. A great saying is, less sound, more ground. That's actually the number one complaint from non-riders, and that's sound pollution. We all like the sound of a finely tuned race machine, but keep those on the racetrack, okay? Respect for animals and their habitat. That shouldn't even need mentioning, but I will. We're out there for fun, to spend time recreating with our friends and families. And we need to remember that we're in a fragile ecosystem, and by neglecting it, we can alter life for the creatures that really call that area home. Depending on where you ride, you might be crossing property lines too. Be mindful to respect signs, for instance, private property or trespassing, and gates. Stay off people's property unless you have permission ahead of time. If you come across a gate, leave it the way you found it, whether open or closed. You might also be cruising by campsites, either designated or not. So again, be respectful when it comes to noise, dust, and keep a respectful distance. So far, we've talked about other parties that you might encounter. 
But how about those that are actually in your own riding group? You all might be buddies and pals, but there still needs to be guidelines and communications between everybody. Maybe there are those in your group that are more advanced than the others. So go easy on the newer riders and don't take them down trails that might be too hard for them. That's just mean. Don't make them ride over their head or keep too fast a pace. Almost cater the ride to those riders specifically. When my buddies and I ride in a mixed group, we actually stagger the group by skill level so the newbies have more advanced riders both in front and behind them. That way they can watch the lines of the rider in front and the rider in back kind of acts as a sweep. Now, this is just a basic list of trail manners, and there will be others for sure, depending on where you ride and when you ride, and there's going to be plenty of other factors. If you've got another item that you would think would make a great addition to this content, please feel free and add it as a comment below. It just makes for a better riding community, both safer and more fun for all parties involved. And here's something else to think about. How about joining the uh, American Motorcyclist Association? By joining the AMA, not only will you support an organization that promotes and protects the motorcycling lifestyle, you'll also get the perk of an additional 10% off most of the brands we offer here at BikeBandit.com. We hope you found this video helpful. If this is your first time joining us in the Bike Bandit Garage, remember to hit the little red button and subscribe to our channel. With each new video, you'll be in the loop learning more about motorcycles and ways to be a better ambassador to the sport and the lifestyle that we all love so much. Thanks again for joining us. We'll see you soon. Guess what? Time to go riding.